Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 17th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. First of all, thanks to everybody who came to our panel today. We got actually, as usual, I have to say, a lot more questions than we were able to answer. So for all of those who were not able to attend, we will answer some of these questions in upcoming diaries. One issue that actually always sort of comes up in this context is also privacy. And we have a new internet draft that tries to protect the privacy of HTTPS. Now, why would you need to protect the privacy of HTTPS, which is an encrypted protocol? Well, the problem with HTTPS right now is that the host name that you're connecting to is still exposed in the clear due to a feature called server name indication. Server name indication tries to solve the problem where you have multiple HTTPS websites that are hosted on one IP address. In this case, the server has to know which key to use and which certificate to send back to the request. This is why the server name is exposed in the clear. Pretty much all current web servers and browsers support this feature, given that uh, you typically do have multiple websites hosted on the same IP address. This used to be a problem with HTTPS, and it used to be that you needed a specific IP address and port combination for each HTTP host. But thanks to server name indication, this went away at the cost of less privacy. Now, this latest internet trap does leverage DNS in order to bootstrap encryption. The encryption key would be published via DNS. Another interesting idea that they're proposing here is you, of course, want to encrypt as many of these requests as possible, not just sensitive ones, because then an attacker who has a man in the middle position, who is able to sniff the traffic, would still be able to check that you're going to a sensitive site. Well, they're proposing proposing that this particular protocol could be implemented by services like Cloudflare. And actually Cloudflare is one of the organizations that contributed to this standard. So we'll have to see where this all goes, but the proposal here is really that between encrypted DNS by using DNS over HTTPS and encrypted server name indication, there would really be no way for anybody to detect which websites you visit. Enterprises, of course, would still be able to disrupt this by, for example, not forwarding these DNS records or by still proxying some of these HTTPS connections. This is really more intended sort of for a home user who would like to privately browse without having, for example, an internet service provider intercept and inspect traffic. And starting February next year, Microsoft is going to change a little bit how it distributes updates for Windows 10. Currently, there are three possible updates that you could download each one. One, the largest one, is what Microsoft refers to as full updates, and it contains all the necessary components that have changed since the last feature update. So this is what's sometimes also referred to as the cumulative update update essentially every file that changed, so also past month's changes, are rolled into one large update that currently, according to Microsoft, is about one gigabyte in size and is expected to stay around that size for as long as Windows 10 will be supported. On the other end of the spectrum, you have Express updates. Express updates really just include the changes and only the individual files that changed since the last update. So so this is a lot smaller, about 150 to 200 megabytes. And that's essentially what you would get if you continuously update your systems. Also, if you're using something like, for example, the Windows Server Update service, you would use these Express updates.
Now, so far, Microsoft has offered a third update that's sort of in between. These are Delta updates, and they include not just what changed, but the complete component. So if one file in a particular software package changes, the Delta update does include the entire software package, but only changes since the last update. So in short, Delta updates can only be applied if you applied the last monthly update, just like Express updates, but they are a lot larger. Well, starting February, you will no longer see these Delta updates, so you either use the Express updates if you continuously update your systems, or the full updates if you skipped a couple of monthly updates. Shouldn't really matter much for your average user, just uh, update each month and you shouldn't really see a difference here. I guess what Microsoft is trying to accomplish here is that they will provide less variety in update files. So this of course will make quality control and such simpler for them because all these uh, different Delta updates they now have to maintain will no longer have to be published. And sticking with Microsoft here for another story, Microsoft researchers conducted a successful test of spoofing GPS signals in order to throw off car navigation systems. Now, the ability to spoof GPS systems has been known for a while. These researchers, however, were able to take into account actual road layouts to redirect the driver to the wrong address. So in order to accomplish this, they had to provide some reasonably plausible spoofed locations that would trigger wrong directions in the navigation system. Now, of course, to protect everybody's safety involved, they only did limited tests of this in real world scenarios, but they did quite extensive tests in simulators. And one thing they, for example, did is where they had actual drivers that were asked to drive to a certain location, either in a real car or for the most part in simulators. And then they introduced those fake GPS signals and turned out 95% of drivers ended up up at the wrong address. Now, the only real sort of countermeasure that they're proposing here is to also use computer vision in order to use cues in the environment to double check the GPS location. Now, not sure if that's really necessary. The threat is I think uh, still not all that practical. This is nothing that's sort of easily applied on a large scale, but uh, certainly, you know, if you think about things like, for example, self-driving cars, this may become a larger threat than it's now from a safety point of view. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.